better fish than mine. You think these things aren't eating well? Look at the belly on that fish. This week on Kentucky Field. Now, who's gonna net it? <laughs> when it comes to catfishing, sometimes the best bait is whatever the river gives you. This ray will sink the boat in about an hour and a half. Next. Bullfrog season opens May 15th. Chad, let's light this up right here, man. Can you get that far out? And you know we're ready for it. He tried to jump in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> then, want to catch more fish? Well, knowing where the habitat is, is a great place to start. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you spend much time outdoors here in Kentucky, you've heard we have a major problem with Asian carp. But if there is a silver lining, they make excellent catfish bait. So Jim, I think this is the fourth show that you and I have done together. And I never know what we're gonna fish for. I always just say, hey, what would you fish for today? And today you said, catfish. Catfish. Go ahead. Hop in? Yeah. Right. What are you predominantly catching? Are we looking at blues, channel blues. cat? Blues, yeah, okay. target blues mostly. And blue catfish, for a lot of people who don't know, that they, they get really big. Yep. They can get really, really they big. They can. What do you catch down here? I mean, they lucky. range from two pounds to 50? Two to, two to five, you know, is our good eater fish. And then, you know, 10 pound, 10 to 50 pound is not uncommon. <laughs> so. What's the biggest one you've seen caught down here in the river? Biggest we've had, had a fellow catch one weighed 80. Wow. Yeah. Oh, had yeah. a lady catch one this spring that was 50. So. Wow. And I'm watching for bait now. <laughs> Okay. We're looking for floater Asian carp. Oh, okay. So. What does that tell you? Just easy to get it. Get easy bait. Just go oh, pick it up off yeah. top of water, you know. It's... That one's a little bit too done. <laughs> this is not the first time that you and I went out and you've just adapted because you assume that the fish have adapted their feeding and they're eating Asian carp. Yes. So you fish with Asian carp quite a bit, don't you? Quite often, yeah. yeah. Man, we got shark in here? No. <laughs> no, that's, that's what you're talking about, coming to the turbines right there. Yes. It just took the head right off. And I'll tell you one thing, that's about as fresh as it gets. That's a perfect one right there now. I can tell you, two alt circle hook and catch just about any fish in the river, you know. There's a lot of strength in, in that right there. Yeah. It's Set a lot you. stronger than your line. Yep. <laughs> Set your drag right and take your time. This is our three-way rig that I use for 90% of my striper fishing and catfish. Our old buddy, Hope Carlton. Oh, yeah. Remember old Hope? This is the rig that he used to use. You can tell these are hands that have tied many, 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 many of these knots. You do it so quick and fast. Time of my sleep, my wife has to wear a shower cap to bed at night. <laughs> you start braiding her hair? I do. I tie her. <laughs> Had her hair in knots much, she just started wearing a shower cap. So. <laughs> this is what the loop is for. You can change the size of your weight really easy. Yeah. Go all the way to the bottom and then pull it up a couple cranks and that's where we're gonna reside, right? Yes. You Let me tell get me in. you tell me when and where and we'll make it happen. In the spot here, you gotta be lined up just right, you know. Catfish do suspend more often than what a, what you realize. Blues are notorious for that, aren't they? Yes, very much so. Don't set the hook. Yeah, <laughs> don't set the hook. Not hard, just pull on him. 
When did you discover that these uh, air bladders were pretty good bait? Just start trying things. You yeah, know. oh yeah. You know, anytime you can find something that there's an abundance of that's easy to easy to get, then it makes good bait. That's that's <laughs> makes your life easier, huh? Look, yep. there we go. Put that uh -oh. on there. You got one too. Look at Look at there. What do you know? I was just about ready to reel this thing up because I did not want to get wrapped up in you. No. Now, who's gonna net it? <laughs> oh, I, we can we'll figure it out. Nope, that's that is a perfect size blue catfish. That what do you think weighs about five pounds or better? I'd say close to five. A little better fish than mine. You think these things aren't eating well? Look at the belly on that fish. We've had a line in the water for about it's been a while. Six minutes. This rate will will sink the boat in about an hour and a half. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Fishing's fun, but there's got to be a little catching involved. You know? <laughs> I've never had to have much patience when I come with you. You try a bait and you don't get many bites or whatever, kind of slow, change baits. Finally. Finally there got you another go. fish. Grab that net. That's okay. You don't think it's nah. I need a net? We'll just pick him up. Go ahead and catch another. How did that fish air bite? With his mouth. With his lips, huh? You know? <laughs> he bounced so around we, there a little bit. We did get a we did get a bite on that uh, on that new secret bait you got there. Yeah. Here we go. This technique today that you've decided to go with is just Use for bait whatever the river gives us. Right. Let's do it. Probably don't really want to know what he's saying. <laughs> no, probably not. All we need is more of them. <laughs> well, I'm having a blast. Right. Feels like a channel cat. A little, little bit of shake there. It is a channel cat. There you go. Man calls it off of the head shake. He knew what he had. Now, what, uh, as far as just table fare, which one do you prefer? Blues are hard to beat, but these are, they're good also. This is a pretty good one right here. He's got me doubled over. You lose that fish, I'm just gonna push you in. <laughs> yeah, I deserve it. Get out. <laughs> he didn't break that, he just come off. <laughs> I was actually sitting there loosening the drag or getting ready. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, Whew. that's better. What, now, I don't know what happened there. Jim, that's a pretty solid fish. That's pretty nice. That is a pretty good fish right there. Oh, let me get him a little bit closer. There you go. Thank you, man, that's a, that's a pretty good fish. I don't know what that fish did. He just made a, bust, a burst up and I lost contact with him. This is a good fish. I think we'll probably turn this one loose. What do you think? I think so. And that's what it's all about. Take what you need, put some back, and uh, come back another day and catch them again. That's that's the best way to do it. Yep. That's a that's a big. Look at he broke his fin off. He lost his handle. That fish is probably thirty something inches long and fat and thick and strong. You got another? We got a double on. This right here is why you come out here and fish below the dam. D you didn't even have to bring bait. You just picked up what the river gave you, and lo and behold, it's our second double of the day. <laughs> you got you a blue there. And for someone who says that, that likes the catfish and says, man, I can't believe you're, uh, you're taking a couple of these. You're a man that makes your living off coming down here and putting people on catfish. Taking a mess home for the fryer every now and then is not gonna hurt a thing, is it? Not, not at all. Not at all. Again, couldn't be any fatter. Belly's about to burst, it's so fat. Well, thanks again, it's always a blast. Thank you. You're a lot of fun to be out here in the boat with, that's for sure. We only had to go a half a mile and caught all we wanted and had to come back. The cooler's completely full. Yeah, now we gotta clean them. Now we gotta clean them. Frog gigging season comes in here in Kentucky on May the 15th. 
It's time to check your calendar, find you a warm night, and get after them. We're here in Woodford County tonight, and it is July. It's hot, and tonight we are after what? Bullfrogs. Bullfrogs. You know, Travis, you called up a couple weeks ago, and you were actually a college roommate with one of our videographers, Jameson Stander, and said, hey, Jameson, do you guys ever like the frog gig? Jameson's like, man, this is one of Chad's favorite things in the world. And you said, I got a honey hole. Yeah, this is one of our best spots. <laughs> we scouted it for a couple days. I think it's going to be a productive evening. So how long have you guys been chasing frogs? I've been chasing frogs since I was 16, 17 years old. Oh, yeah. It's something I really enjoy. You can do it. There's a, there's a lull between turkey season and dove season, and this is a perfect way to fill that lull. So the goal is going to be let it get dark and try to fill a skillet full of frog legs. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, it's one of my favorite things to eat, and one of my favorite things to do is get out. This time of year, you know, there's tons of fishing opportunities, but if you want to get out and do something like this, listen to that. You want to get out here and do something like this, you know, it gives you an opportunity. It's, it's kind of like hunting. In a time of year where there's not a whole lot of that going on, you can get a frog gig, you can get your pellet rifle, whatever you want to do. Grab them by your hand if you grab want. Grab them by your hand. I mean, there's so many different ways to get them. And frog gigging season is a long period of time. You've got from the third Friday in May all the way till October. What's your favorite conditions for frog gigging? Well, you like it to be hot, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of us don't like to get out when it's this hot, but uh, you get a nice, warm, still night, good humidity, and uh, get the bugs flying, and that's when you really get into the frogs. Oh, yeah. Watch well, out, let's get our gear together and kind of put a game plan, and uh, I mean, they're right here right now. <laughs> we'll get, it, get in there and get after them, what do you think? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Look at that one right there. Let's try to make a move on that joker. Ooh, big dude. And there's a couple around it, but let's move down here a little bit and we'll get him lit up when we get down on the water edge and try to get around top of him. And jump. All right, well that should be the first of many chances. There's a couple right there. We'll have to just check them for size. That one right there is for sure big enough. All right, there's one right there that might be big enough. You gotta start somewhere, right? That's right. <laughs> there you go. He's big enough. Chad, let's light this one up right here, man. Can you get that far out? All right. I believe we got a frog on the end of the stick there. I don't know if I got him or not. I believe you do. Nice. That's a nice little lean out there to grab that joker. All right. Tell you what, there is absolutely nothing better. All right, let's go up in these trees. We're gonna find a bunch, okay? You gotta come up on the top side on these. That's a big frog right there, guys. <laughs> Hold on, don't move it, don't move it. Drive it to the ground. <laughs> Got him. Wow. <laughs> Dude, that, that was awesome. You, where did you? Barely got him back here on the web. Got it. That's a big frog. That's a big, now. Now that is that's twelve inch frog right there. I think. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to jump in my pocket. <laughs> that's a good frog right there. Now I saw it go in, and I could tell that it was behind him a little bit. And I saw that splash and I thought, what in the world just happened? <laughs> I guess with the trajectory, I was up on the bank a little bit. I mean, when I Undershot lunged, him. I was just right behind him. Nice recovery. This frog almost got away twice. Right here in front of me. Oh, that's a good one there. 
Here we go. Good deal, man. Nice. I feel like a 16-year-old kid right now, I will tell you that. Fun, isn't it? It's just so, it's so much fun. There's something about it being out here. I remember being a kid, you're like, oh, I'm out later than I'm supposed to be, and you're tired, you wake up the next morning, and the second you wake up, heads off the pillows, a big smile on your face. You're like, that was cool, that was fun. <laughs> You got one? Yeah, he's just a little small. We're gonna let him go, but. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was just showcasing another way to go out there and catch him. Yeah, you can catch him. There you go. All right. Nice job. Nice job, bros. That's a good one. Eight foot gig is almost not enough. When they start getting that big broke, you know what you got. You start getting that big hump in their back right there. Those discs get about the size of a dime. You know you got a good one. Big old bro. I hear them back on that levee. You know what they're doing, don't you? They're making fun of us. That's right. Because we've been through there twice. <laughs> I say what we do this time, we'll grab my pellet rifle, we'll come up on that bank and see if we can't get down to some of these that are more difficult to get a gig in there. Shot. Nice. All right. I got him right there. Do you see him? I see him. Got him. Whoa. Uh, 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 uh. All right, Chad. He's right there. Good shot. Nice one. I tell you what, the old pellet gun's three for three. Guys, I stepped over right beside this spillway right here, and there's a big bullfrog sitting right up underneath this drain. We're gonna see if I can't come over the top of him and get him this way. I'll go down here and shine him if you try to get on top and see if you can get a shot down. Nice. Yes, sir, look at that shot. Look at that big old white belly on that frog. Wow. Nice shot. Got him. Nice job. Got him? Got him. Got him? Nope. Gone. I thought it looked like it hit him pretty square. I don't know, man. I've missed a few myself. So we gave it a good hour. Let it settle back down. I say we make one more trip around it. There's a good chance there's gonna be one sitting up there with a headache or a backache or a backache. Hold on, guys. He's right here. See him? You may shoot him again. If you got a good shot on him, go ahead. Got him! I'll tell you what, this is just a lot of fun. I really appreciate you having us out. This has been an absolute blast. Hey, thanks for coming out and hanging out with us. We had a great time. One of the big fish habitat projects that the Department of Fish and Wildlife worked on in 2019 was at Barren River Lake, and the water has finally receded enough to start fishing it. So we're here at Barren River State Park, and for all the boats that are driving by, they have to be wondering what in the world is going on over there. We've got so much material on the bank that your program is putting this in for fish habitat, right? Yes, correct. This is the first phase of our large-scale Barren River Lake habitat project. We've got seven phases planned for this, and this is kind of our, our kickoff project. We're here in Lower Peters Creek, and uh, we got 15 or so sites picked out here, and a lot of this stuff's gonna be centered around bass and crappie structure. Commissioner and I, we're right here in your backyard at Barren River Lake. You spend a lot of time fishing this lake, don't you? Yeah, I do, absolutely. I have for many years. So tell me a little bit about why this project work is really important to you. Well, with being a fish and angler here, this at one time was considered to be one of the top bass fisheries in the state. And over the past few years, I started getting reports and things from other anglers as well as fishing the lake myself and have found that the catch rates were just not what we'd been accustomed to here. Mm -hmm. And wanting to keep that same high standard, you know, what do we need to do to improve that catch rate for our anglers as well as improve the lake overall in general? And first one of the things that came up was habitat. So Eric, tell me a little bit about why Barron is perfect for this fish habitat project we have going on. You know, Barron's got a lot of good fisheries, bass, crappie, and that's principally what this project is geared towards, are those two fisheries. Not that they're in decline or need it, but this project will help put anglers in contact with those fish. Right in. 
Yeah. You guys are using some different structure this year. We've been at Cave Run Lake. We did a major project over there over three years. I know you were a part of that as well. Yeah. But this project's a little different. This lake, because Army Corps of Engineer Lake, raises significantly from summer to winter pool. How are you adjusting for that? Because that's got to be a major issue. The bulk of our material at Cave Run was brush material, cedar trees. Without a draw down there, we don't really have to be that much concerned with the breakdown of the material. It's still going to break down a little bit, but here with the draw down, we've kind of adjusted and moved towards some larger trees and also some of these plastic products here. You've got to have that habitat present for the angler to come in contact with where the fish are actually locating. When we get that good habitat on the ground and we get the fish using those locations and the anglers knowing where they are, the success rate goes way up. And as well as the fish are more healthy and they have bait fish and other things have places to hide and so that way it turns out well. So you've been putting out structure for years. How long does it take a fisherman to locate those and start catching fish on them? Oh, not long. I mean, those guys will come in right after us and fish it. And now whether they catch stuff, but we may come back even you know, maybe at the tail end after we've dumped stuff and go over it and there's fish already associated to it and found it. So it doesn't take long at all. So a lot of the materials that I've seen here are things I've seen in the past. You know, you've got the rock and you've got these big yellow looking PVC pipe trees. And we've talked about those in the past. Now this is a little different material here. Tell me a little bit about what I'm looking at here. This is a commercially made product. This is made by Mossback Fish Habitat. It's essentially a, a PVC structure. The reason we're going this route, there's two real reasons. One is that it's really easy to assemble. We like the way these limbs come out. They provide good shade and cover. Also, just being PVC, it's gonna last forever. When the water goes down and this sets out in the sun and the rain and all the elements, this material is not going to break down like a natural cedar tree would. That's correct. This will last for a long time. Yeah. The texture on this is a little different. It feels kind of rough, and that's built to kind of jumpstart that algae growth, and we need that to bring in bait fish to utilize these. We can bring in some of the sport fish, and that's where this angler component comes in. They can come in, find these structures, fish them, and hopefully at the end of the day, they got a little heavier bag. Tell me a little bit about the shape of this. They've got these V-shaped limbs in here. This reduces the snagging of lures, which you know I think all of us could use, that's for sure. <laughs> People go, man, this sounds like a great deal. How come you don't do this in every one of our lakes? This is a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of work. <laughs> and it's over many years. But, uh, you know, department people here have done a great job of deploying the structure. But we didn't just get there by that. We've had a lot of volunteer groups, a lot of local anglers, a lot of other people that have came and helped out assembling all these products, putting them all together, getting them ready to go out and be put out in the lake for all the anglers around the state that want to come here to Barron River Lake. As far as the locations that we're putting structure out today, these locations and what structure is actually there will all be available on the department webpage in a matter of a week or two. Yeah, exactly. So if you're coming to Barron for the first time and you're thinking, hey, I don't know anything at all about this lake, it's a good place to start. Oh, for sure. And these sites will be on and then there's previous sites that we've put in. So yeah, it's a great resource. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's a really nice buck that was taken by a crossbow by Sammy Brewington, and this deer was taken in Barron County. Nice job. Here we have Ashlyn back hunting with her dad, Matt. They took this nice doe from Anderson County. Congratulations. Four-year-old Jackson Lee Barnes is probably hooked forever now that he's caught his first bass that was taken in Henry County. Nice job. Here we have a really nice buck taken by Andrew Beeman. This is a nice buck that was killed on his Pawpaw's farm in Brookville, Indiana. Congratulations. Here we have Drake Robichere. He's holding his very first trout ever. Congratulations. Here we have 10-year-old Eli Harris who bagged his very first squirrel using a 410 shotgun. This squirrel was taken in his Papaw David's woods. Nice job. Here we have a really nice bass that was caught by 11-year-old Luke Parker in a private pond in Russell County. 
Congratulations. Check out this beautiful bull elk that was taken by Jimmy Elgood. This bull was taken in Perry County in the second week of bull firearm season. Nice job. During these tough times, we've all been stuck at home and in the house with our family, but hopefully you've been making time to get outdoors. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.